All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Please introduce yourself in the chat. We are so excited. You are here with us on this beautiful Saturday for day two of Seesaw Connect. Let us know where you're coming from. Let us know your role. Thank you so much for being here with us today. My name is Emily from the Seesaw team. I see Carrie has joined us, Justine from Missouri, Brittany Tarr, Crystal. Welcome, welcome, welcome. People are coming from Pakistan. We have so many people from all around the globe. It is so wonderful to see you here today. Uh, I want to welcome you to Making Subplans Easier Through Seesaw, led by our phenomenal presenter, Marie Schroeder. During this session, we encourage you to take notes, share insights, and be really active in your learning. Remember, you earn points for the leaderboard by being active in sessions. So I know many of you have done a few of these so far, but as a reminder, we have our chat feature, which is open to the public, um, so everyone in the session can see it. We also have a Q&A where you can ask presenter-specific questions questions, which we'll try to get to all of those at the end. There is also a tab uh, titled handouts if the presenter has given anything out. If you would like to use closed captionings that is available in the top right corner, you can click that and select your preferred language. You do have to stay the entire time to receive your PD certificate. And we will also be doing a raffle at the end of the session to win a gift card to the Seesaw store. Now, I'm going to pass it over to Marie. Uh, she has some amazing things in store for you. Thanks for joining us. Hi, everybody. I am so excited that you are taking your time out of your day to come in. Um, be a part of this. I hope that you learn so much from this and that, you know, this really is something that is going to benefit you in your classroom that you can expand on. So let's get started. Okay, so um, here's just a little bit about me. My name is Marie Schroeder. I am, work in the Orchard Farm School District at Discovery Elementary in Missouri. I'm a second grade teacher. This is my 10th year teaching and my ninth year using Seesaw. I'm a mom of two girls. I say I'm a runner wannabe because I don't actually love it, but it's good for me, so I do it. Uh, I love being outside and being active, getting in that plant life, and learning new skills. My technology isn't always working right here. There we go. Okay, so today's goals. Um, for this, we really want to learn the why and the how this is going to benefit you in the classroom. Uh, we're going to be practicing working on, duplicating, and editing your own template, and then uh, building your own as well. So when you leave this um, session, you are going to have these resources with you that hopefully you are going to be able to take straight to your classroom and put to use. Especially, this is a great time to do this before the school year starts so that you've already got the stuff up and ready to go. Okay, okay so the why. Um, why is this beneficial, right? These are going to be easily editable sub plans that once you have this template, you can copy, edit, make a couple edits, add in your activities, and send it off. This is not something that should be taking much of your time, right? I know that being out is difficult. Being away from school, taking care of yourself or your family shouldn't be um, an added weight to your job. So this is here to help with that. Um, and in doing so, you're still making those amazing connections to content with those enriched activities, either through the Seesaw Library or ones that you are making yourself and adding in there. Um, a great part of this is that you've got live comments still. So even if you're out, you can hop on your computer as they um, are working on these and you can make comments on there. You can give them that automatic feedback all while they're working. Even if it's a draft and they haven't submitted it yet, you can still be communicating back and forth, which is also really nice for the kids because then they're still getting that connection with you. 
Um, and then the parent connection, right? Um, our parents love knowing what they're doing, what the kids are doing in their classroom, and they're still able to do that. They know that even when you're gone, they're still doing these enriched activities, and they are still having that connection into the classroom, which we know our parents love. And if you're a parent yourself, you like seeing that as also. Okay, then let's go to how to implement it. Um, what does this look like in your sub plans? This is something that you're going to want to keep in mind. So. Um, whenever we have subs, we love that they come in our buildings. We want to make this easier for them. So this is something that you'll want to think about, um, kind of what expectations they're going to be for the sub, how you get your kids ready for this. Um, do you have them practice or not? So on the next slide, we're going to actually see how I put it into my sub plans. But this is something that I want you to get yourself thinking about also, because we don't want this to be an added weight for your sub or for your kids. You know, um, at the beginning of the year, the more they get to, your students get used to Seesaw, they're going to be um, more able to navigate through that so that when you're out, they know what to do and what expectations there are too. Um, so you might want to give yourself time and your kids time to practice with that um, and then just see what works best. So here is an example of what my sub plans would look like if it was the math section. Um, at the top, you can see, I kind of run through um, how the students are gonna get into the activity itself, how they're gonna get into the sub plans, what it's going to look like, what they're going to be doing. Um, I made sure to put in there that as they're working on this, since it is a full day thing, they are gonna wanna make sure to have the students hit that save progress. So that's gonna be that like orangish colored check on there so that it doesn't submit it to me, right? That's something that you're probably gonna wanna practice with kids, especially those little, so that they get used to that so it stays in their box. Now I do put in here that, you know, it happens, right? They're gonna hit that green check. Since the sub is not going to be able to send it back to them because they won't have access to Seesaw, I just put in there, um, but I will check it periodically, but if I don't for some reason see it that they can email me, I can go in and I can send it back to them. Um, and then I put pictures in here also of what the activities look like so that they know what to expect, right? I want to make sure that my sub also feels like they are connected to this, they're supported, they're going to be able to support my kids if they have questions. And then the other side of it is that when they finish early, um, you know, you've got those early finishers, that there is a tab on there with um, extra time activities. So that also my sub knows that, you know, the students might not be on that math page. If they finish, they're going to go on to those extra time activities and they're going to have different things that they can teach them as well. Um, also with that, if you guys um, at any point during this have ideas or this sparks some interest, um, some different things that you think would be helpful, please feel free to add that into the chat. You know, I love um, collaborating with teachers. I think that we have, we are our best resources. So if you've got ideas off of this, please feel free to put it in there so that other people can see too. Um, so that, you know, we can, again, keep building on this, right? Okay, so um, a great part of this, I wanted to take time to go through um, actually how to search for lessons in the library because there are so many different options, right? At the top, you can see you've got your community library, your school and district library, the Seesaw library, and your own. Um, I gotta be honest, I love the cutesy um, activities and stuff. I am not very good at making them though. So my first thing that I will always do is I will go into that Seesaw library. I will type in what I'm looking for and I will first see if it is already there because I don't want to recreate the wheel. That is way too much. And I know probably nine times out of 10, somebody's going to make that cuter than me and it's already done for me. So um, that is an amazing tool for you to use um, and just navigate through because there's so many different things. Um, you know, they've got even new activities with coding or with highlights to so where once a quarter, you know, you can go in, assign a highlight and your kids get to highlight different activities and things that they have done and grown on. And so there's just so many options in there that um, 
already have pre-made stuff for you that you don't have to do it. Again, makes your life so much easier, which big fan of, right? Um, and even things like daily routines. That's that's awesome. And they'll check them. Um, then another thing which is great is that you can schedule activities. Um, if you are a really good planner or you know that this is a goal for you to have this year, scheduling activities is amazing. Um, you know, I said before how I was a runner wannabe. I actually was in a hiking accident last year and was out um, um, a kind of a significant amount off and on throughout the year just with surgeries and stuff. Scheduling activities saved my life, right? I could go in when I knew I was going to be out. I searched for a couple of activities that I knew were going to be beneficial. I scheduled in when I wanted them to pop up and it was done. I didn't have to worry about it. We went up on their own. This is a huge time saver that um, putting into your plans, let's say every Monday during your plan time, you know you want to find two to three math activities for the week. You go in, you do it, you schedule it, it's done. And the great thing with Seesaw also is that once you find those activities, you can share them out to your co-teachers, um, everybody else in your grade level so that they've got that too. So maybe it's, you know, once a month, it's my turn. I go find the activities. I share them with my teachers. We schedule them. It's done. The next week, somebody else on my team does it. This is a great way to, again, lessen that load so that our lives, are, we don't have to worry so much about the planning and the scheduling, getting all of that in, and we can focus more on our kids and getting that one-on-one -on -one time with them, right? So, again, I love making sessions that you are going to walk away with stuff that's going to make your life easier. So, what we're going to do right now is we are going to take some work time. And this is for you guys to go into the library and you are searching for activities. But maybe for some of you, this might be your first time using Seesaw. This is just for you to get comfortable with it. Go through, think about different things that are going to come up in your curriculum throughout the year that you would like to have activities for on hand, right? As you're doing that, make sure to click that heart on your activity because that'll put it into your library too so that you've got easy access to it. But maybe this isn't your first year using Seesaw. You feel like a vet. This is for you to go in. Find some activities that you're loving. Maybe find some new ones. Search for some things you haven't before and practice scheduling them, right? School is coming up. I know I'm going to say it. I'm sorry. School's coming up very soon. <laughs> Summer is almost over. But again, let's start the year on a good note and schedule some activities for the first week of school, right? Let's make this easier on ourselves. So put in some. That way, you know that that first week, it's going to be crazy knowing that you already have activities in place that are going to pop up for your kids to do now getting that out of the way that's one less thing that you have to worry about when the craziness happens okay um also while you're doing this um please feel free if you find an activity again that you love that you think will be super beneficial other people should see put the link in the chat and then just type in what grade level you think it's going to pertain to that way other people can see it um, and we can share those out because again, as soon as you do that, if you see different links on there of grade levels and you click on that activity, you love it, you can heart it, save it, it's done. It's right there at your fingertips so that you've got it all, you know, for years to come because again, these don't go away. So you've got this in your library forever. Um, and then, yeah, we're going to take about five minutes. I will hop onto the chat so that if you guys have questions or anything, I can be answering that during. And then also, if you guys get done early, if we feel like this is running good, feel free to put that in and because we can always move on to if you're ready to, but please don't also feel like you have to. Take the time, see what um, there is out there, and then we'll be back in about five minutes.
All right, as you guys are finishing up, um, thank you so much to people that were putting um, activities in the chat. I know that um, some of you have found, um, Christine found a social emotional one that she put in there. Um, those are awesome and super helpful. I love that you guys found some great ones. Um, okay, so we are going to keep moving. Okay, so this is um, when we get into actually the sub template, okay? Um, on here, we're gonna get into as an example that I have made that I've used in my room. Um, we're gonna view it as a student, but I want you guys before I click into this to keep in mind, if you have not done this before, uh, this might seem like a lot at first to get into it. Please keep in mind, later in the session, I'm gonna break this down on how to actually do it. Um, there's going to be a couple different ways to make it um, maybe more creative, more your own way, um, or I'm going to keep it pretty basic to where you're just kind of going to figure out what level you're at and then build on it as you get more comfortable with it, okay? But as we go through here, this is um, actually a template that I have made. Um, we're going to view it as a student, like I said, um, just so you can kind of see what your kids would be seeing. So on here, um, a great feature is that you are able to leave them a message as um, the teacher. So they can pop on, they can click on this. They're going to be able to actually hear you. Maybe this is just you saying like, hey guys, I'm really sorry I'm out today. I hope you're having a super fantastic day. I can't wait to see all of your amazing work, you know, whatever you want it to be. Um, but then I like to kind of set this up as more of a choice board. Maybe you're going to give them options when they do things. Um, maybe you're still going to have this in your regular scheduled time um, order. It's whatever, you know, works for you. Um, the great thing about Seesaw is that you see all these little buttons around here. I have linked in where the activity is. So if it is reading time, they're going to come over. They're going to click on that reading link. It's going to take them straight to that activity. Right. Um, again, this is one that I found on the Seesaw library. I did not create this. So use that library. Um, you've got a button. You're going to give them the directions. Um, they know how to respond on here. This one, they use the frame to where they get to choose how they respond. This is all about the reading this week. Um, I added this little star at the bottom. Um, you know, I said on here, I teach second grade. I think this is a great thing for your littles maybe even your uppers too, um, that it's a home button. So I want this to be as easy to navigate as possible. So I have this star on here and it lets them know that every time they click it, it's going to take them right back to the home. Okay. But then again, anytime they are in that content area, they're going to click on the side. It's going to take them to whichever side. So really, they won't really have to use these side buttons. Um, you can even hide it if you want to. But then the tools that they are going to use to respond are these on the side. So they've got their text, their microphone, their camera, and they've got these other options too. If you um, are giving that as the choice in here on these, it already has the frames on here of how they're going to respond. So they wouldn't need to use those. Um, but then another thing that I put in there is I put in little brain break videos. And then this is that extra time tab that I was telling you about. Now on here, I switch it to a heart because as they are moving through these activities, they can click on the heart to bring them back um, for the extra time as long as they have it. So this is another activity that they can just make um, different things with their shapes. When they're finished, they can click on that heart and it'll take them right back here. Um, so again, this is just kind of how they would be navigating through. You can see the different activities that are on here though, that they would have access to. Um, this is, again, you just building what's gonna work in your classroom. Um, the brain break activities, I did use Go Noodle videos because that's what our class uses. This is, again though, what works for you. And all of these activities are ones from the Seesaw Library, which is fantastic for me because it's again, one less thing that I have to create and they're all applicable to my classroom. Now, I also wanna say that this um, lesson plan or the sub plan is going to be in those resources that are in that handout tab. So 
so that when we have time, you guys are going to have this too. So that if you feel like this is a really great resource for you, you can use it as it is, you can edit it. But again, you're walking away with one subplan that's already finished. So as we hop back over here, um, I want you to think about as you did that slide, kind of what do you feel like worked? Do you feel like this is something that your students access? If not, how can you edit it? How can you change it to make it where it's going to be um, a great tool for you and your class to use? This is already like, oh my gosh, this is mind blowing. I'm so, where have you been all my life? I want you guys to pick your favorite little emoji thing from the bottom and just share it out. So, um, and then try to start thinking too, because in just a little bit, we're going to be making your own. I want you to think about kind of the order that you want to put things in, whether it is the order of your schedule, whether it is just kind of putting it all up there and they can click through as they need to. Um, what are you going to do to make it work for you? What categories do you need? What are your routines? Your main thing that I want you to think about is creating a base template. So it's not necessarily putting in all of the activities for every content area. It's your base so that every time you're out, you can go in and duplicate that lesson plan and then add in the activities for that. So I know that every single day, I'm gonna need them to do reading, writing, math, content. I want that brain break and I want extra activity. I know I need those six tabs on there. So on my home side, I can already have that done. Um, I know I'm going to want those extra routines and those brain breaks. I can leave those in there and that becomes my base. So I kind of want you to think that way. What do you need in a base so that when it's time to be out, you can duplicate and then you're going to add in your reading, writing, and all of those activities. Um, and then let's keep going. Okay, things to keep in mind before you get started. Um, this is also kind of what I was just going over a little bit too. Um, you use the library, right? Don't remake the wheel. You're gonna be using activities that um, are already there. If you can, copy and paste them in your plans. I'm gonna go through and show you how to do that too, right? There's assessment tools on there. Um, I put on there to make sure to do a home button if you feel it's going to be useful. Again, that's, I work more with the little, so I know that that's something that um, is going to help them just navigating back and forth. That's a lot for littles to get going through. But if you give them those tools to just make it easier, it can help save, be a huge time saver. Um, what can you add to the template to make it easier um, on you later? And then I put on the bottom ideas for you. If you think that there's something that would be really beneficial to have in these, please, again, put it in the chat so that everybody else can see it so that those are really great ideas for us to keep in mind whenever we've got that work time in a little bit for you guys to be putting um, into yours. And then this is the sub plan that we are going to be able to access to edit. So this is going to be more of um, one that I would keep as my base, right? Um, I'm going to click over into it and then we are going to practice um, seeing kind of what it looks like to go through and edit this, right? Before I click to view it as a student for the other one that I just showed you, this one, since we're going to be editing it, I don't want to view it as a student. I'm going to come down here to these three buttons. And actually, before I click onto that, I want to go through too. Because um, again, if you're new to Seesaw, this is a great um, thing that you're going to use those three buttons if you want to add this to your collection, if you want to make a copy and edit it. So if this was my base and I'm going to be out in a couple of days and I need to make new plans, I would copy this and do the copy and edit so that I would still keep this as my base. And then I would be making my new one for the day that I was going to be out in a couple um, I have the option to just edit this activity. I can print it. This would be a really good thing um, to do for your sub. So in the slide before, 
<clears throat> sorry, um, I had put pictures into um, that map, but I wouldn't even have to do that. I could just print the entire activity for my sub to have also. Um, if I wanted to delete this, I could do it that way or sharing it with my teachers. Um, this is how I would do that. So I'm just gonna go in, I'm gonna click edit this activity and I want to edit the template. So when we go in this way, um, this gives us more features. This button here was not on there whenever it was a view as a student because this is where I would add it in if I have multiple choice questions, I use the assistant, I use my frames. This is where I would click on that, okay? So this is where I'm gonna stop and think, what do I want in my frames? What do I know I'm gonna use? Um, you can see off to the side, I still have those brain break activities here. I still have my extra time um, choice board and I still have all of these because I don't want to keep finding them. I know I can use those for a couple of times I'm out because I don't plan on being out often. They won't be um, super familiar with them. It'll still be a fresh thing. I might change those and make a, like a template number two and have different extra time activities in there. But for now, I know that I can keep those for a while. So this is a great start to my base. Um, I'm gonna go in and let's start. I would just click on here and I'm gonna put math because I'm gonna have a math tab. Um, I will say I like having um, extra tabs at the top because for me, it makes it easier to navigate. Um, but you know, whatever works for you, maybe you guys have split screens that you do it on. Um, we're gonna go into the library and use this. I'm gonna go into the Seesaw library and I am going to put in, um, actually let's numbers to 100 because I wanna find math activity. And this is what I'm talking about. There are already activities in here that I can choose from. I don't have to go find one. Um, I can see what works for me, okay? Um, I'm gonna go up and let's pick this 10 frame. I can go in, see if this is one that I like, that I think my kids will like. If I do like it, I can click those three dots. I can copy that page. And then I simply come over here. I hit that control V and it is pasted right into my plans. I don't have to go and create this, right? The next step that I want you to make sure that you remember though, if again, you've got those littles and you want to try to make that navigation easier, is I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna click on my text where it says math. I'm gonna click on those three dots and I want to link it. This is on my second page. So then it's done, right? I don't have to worry about doing that, done and done. Um, I also know that I'm going to be doing some reading activities with them. But I actually don't think, maybe for this, I don't want to do a huge activity. I just kind of want them to talk to me, share it out their own way. I can come down here. I can add a page. This will just put a blank one, but maybe I just want to create this myself, right? I can pull it up wherever I want it. And this is where I can use these tools over here on the side. And maybe I want to have a cute background. That seems like something I want to do. And I want to put in here, um, tell me about an amazing book you have read recently. I can adjust this however I want put it up the top. If I have littles, I can come in here and I can put a voice recording on here so that they can read it themselves. If, um, we think that that's going to be harder for them. 
huge list over. And then I can choose from frames how I want them to respond. Maybe I want them to choose and they get to pick however they want to respond to me. Maybe I know I want them to record a video. I could even put in there, you know, show me a book if you have it with you or go into your reading book, pick out the story that we have read so far that you love, show it to me and then tell me why, right? You can do it however it's going to work for you. I'm just going to click the voice on there and then they can record themselves doing it. Done and done. You can, of course, get more creative, right? On that first page, I've got the little blocks behind it. You can add that. You can add your shapes at the bottom if you want to do it that way. Um, it's kind of whatever works best for you. But again, make sure you go back then to your home page and then you're going to want to link it. So I'm going to go on, link it to page three, done and done. So then whenever I am finished with this, and I know it's good to go. I can hit that green check. And then I can schedule out when I want this to go, or I can make it immediate. Um, it's whichever is going to work for you. Maybe you want to make all of these, have it in your library ready to go. You're going to hit that save button. If you have already um, made this and it's during the school year, and you know you're going to be out in a week, you can create this, schedule it for that day that you're going to be out, and then it's already done, it's off your plate. You don't have to worry about it. All of your plans are finished. Um, that's a great thing about that Sketchmate activity. But again, just takes one thing off our load, right? So guess what? It is more work time. I wanna give you guys time to be able to go through and try to make one yourself. Your goal right now is um, to have that template that you think that you would be easily able to edit, duplicate, right? If you even want to go a step farther and make out a full plan, you know that, you know what, I would like to have one sub plan ready for first quarter. If for any reason I was out, it's already done. I've got that set up ready to go. Go for it. You've got a couple options here too you can go into um, the sub plan that was fully created and kind of edit whatever you want on there, whether it is taking an activity out, adding a couple in, but it is fully done. Maybe that feels more comfortable for you because it isn't that blank slate. Maybe you feel more comfortable with Seesaw and you want to do the template that we just went through, but you feel like blank slate, not so much yet, but you like having some base there or you feel like some of that is also applicable to your grade level and you're gonna go in and edit that one. Or if you are like, I am a Seesaw Pro, I'm ready to go, give me blank slate. You can start from scratch and create your very own template, okay? This is whatever is going to work best for you and be most beneficial for you. Um, try to think about when you walk out of here, what do you want to have? with you ready to go, okay? Um, again, I will be in the chat. If you need anything, if you've got questions, feel free to hop over there. And then again, in that handout tab is where you're gonna find those links to um, those sub plans. That way, um, if you don't wanna do blank slate, you can go into them that way too, okay? Um, we're gonna take about eight minutes to do this and then we will hop back on.
Okay, so I know that um, some of you are probably still working and I hate to cut this a little bit soon, but just to kind of keep us on track with time, I'm actually gonna keep us going um, just to make sure that we can kind of get through these last ones and then still have time for Q&A at the end. Um, these next couple of slides are just things to keep in mind um, that you can set office hours so that only um, alerts go off at certain times for you. Um, just to also keep in mind those assessment tools that are available um, that will make your um, life just easier because it will already grade all of those activities for you if you put that in there and use that. Um, and then making groups. So you're able to make groups in Seesaw. And this is great because then when you go share out activities, um, you can send like if you have a book club with your kids and you've got them all the bunny group, you can send that activity just to them or even through your messages and stuff too. Um, or um, you can share out those activities with just your reading group, um, depending on how you want to do that. But those are always really good features to have too. Um, and then also I'd used before um, a template through Google Slides. So that's still an option. I went ahead and threw that on there. If you want to use that, feel free. But um, again, whichever is easier for you. But I went ahead and threw that up there too. Um, and then this last part is just wrapping up. So this is kind of um, a time for you to step back, think about kind of what you learned, what your next steps are, how you think that you can use this and make this work in your classroom, how you can share this with your team. And even again, um, like I mentioned with the activities, building on this so that you're working with your team um, to create these, you know, if there's like, there's four of us teachers on my team. If we took it and we each made two of these, we would have then that many sub plans already made in, in our toolbox to have that we could then share with each other. Um, again, these are supposed to just make our lives easier because sick, like we're all going to get sick. Things like this are going to happen. We don't want to make this harder for us, right? We And times like that, Having these plans ready to go is what's going to make our lives easier. Um, reach out if you need help after this. On that very first slide, you guys are going to have access to these. On that very first slide um, are ways that you can reach out to me if you need help. You can always reach out to all the people at Seesaw for help. Um, do that because that's why we're here, right? And then um, what steps do I need to have in place beginning of the year for this to be successful? Think about um, if this is a goal for you to use in your room, what do you need to do ahead of time to prepare for that too? Um, because even like as I've done this, I've even had ideas bouncing off this. Okay, yes, I can use this for sub, but I could also use this for a choice board. Maybe I want to have five activities throughout the week that I know I want my kids to do, but I don't care which order. I can make a choice board, put them here. They've got access to it on Monday. As long as they turn it in by Friday with all of those done, I can do it that way. Um, this can just go so many different ways. So, um, you know, hopefully this sparked some really great ideas and you are leaving with some awesome um, resources ready to use. And then that um, link at the bottom here, if you guys go back into that, the resources link to this. Too. So feel free to use those. And then I will send it back over to Emily for our Q&A. Thank you so much. That was so informative. Um, I'm a former educator myself, and I know it was always very stressful when you had a sub. You felt like you had another job, being out sick or having to do something. So thank you for so many of those phenomenal ideas. Um, so... We have a few questions. I'm going to go to the first question from Stephanie. She is wondering, do you have um, backup material in case technology fails? She's really like trying to sell uh, Seesaw to staff and she just has a lot of questions. So she's kind of wondering what you do to make sure that sub is set up for success. Yes, absolutely. So I always try to have a bin of backups, right? I feel like we always have to prepare for all of the things. Um, that's something that I just kind of prep um, at the beginning of the year. So I already have my bin actually in place where it's got one activity that is pretty broad that will work um, no matter what time of year, just on hand so that no matter what, there's something there. 
Phenomenal. Uh, we have another question from Kelsey. Are the subs able to handle technology? We've had several subs that are not comfortable with new technology. Do you have any suggestions? Um, that obviously I feel like is for sure something that pops up a lot. Um, for me, it's prepping my kids ahead of time. So they are having as much experience with this as possible so that when I'm out, they are comfortable with it. And more often than not, they are the ones that are walking through it with the sub if they don't know. So I know that um, one of the times I was out, that same thing happened and my kids were just showing them how to do it. So I just try to embed as much practice time at the beginning of the year into our routines as possible with Seesaw, with just even like simple activities like the daily emotion check-in or something to where they're getting on there and just getting as comfortable as possible. Thank you. And then we have one last question from Brenda. And, and this does come up quite a bit just with um, Seesaw use in general. But she was wondering, uh, for brain breaks, really excited about those brain breaks. But how how is that managed if all students are potentially doing brain breaks at the same time? Do they have headphones on? Do they go somewhere else? Like, how do you manage that? So our kids do have um, headphones. With them, so they are plugging them in and doing it that way. There are times when I've had kids that the headphones don't work. And so I just have them turn the volume down and it hasn't been an issue in my room. Is that guaranteed for everybody? No, but as long as it's kind of at a manageable level, those brain breaks are them getting up and moving. And so it hasn't been a distraction for them. Lovely. And I want one more thing. I know you had said it in the chat, but just to clarify, because mm -hmm. there were a lot of questions coming in about like, yeah. how do we get the sub access or how do we train the sub? And I know you said this, but if you could just repeat it again, like what the actual ask is and what you as a teacher are assigning to students, just so we're all on the same page here again. Yeah, for sure. Um, so with the plans, the sub won't have access to it because they're not in your classroom um, seesaw account. So I try to prep in my sub plans all of the information that I can that they would need to know. And then that's also why I, I put those pictures in there. Or like I went through um, the activity, you can print the whole thing and have it stapled and copied for them because they won't have access to it on the computer. But that way they are still um, aware of what the kids should be doing as they're walking around and helping you know, it's not an unknown thing on their screen. They know what they should see. Um, and then they also know how to help you. Yes, thank you so much for clarifying that. So again, Absolutely. you're assigning this to your students. Your sub doesn't need access to your Seesaw account. And we don't recommend you give someone you don't know access to your Seesaw right. account. That's a lot of student data. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us today. This was such a phenomenal session. Again, your certificate will be emailed to you and we are going to do a giveaway. All right. Let's see who our lucky winners are for the giveaway. And again, we will follow up with you next week. There is nothing you need to do. Tiffany and Carol, congratulations. Okay. I'm just writing down those names. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Um, if you have time before your next session, we encourage you to go in, talk to other educators, go into the chat, go into the networking center, earn more points. And we can't wait to see you for the next session. Thank you so much.